I've been wondering when to do a review on this printer for a while. I got a bit spooked by its specs when it came out. 500 millimeters per second and 20k acceleration. It seemed way too good to be true at that price point. But I assembled it, I printed it, tested it out, see what it was like, expecting to see some sort of catch that would explain this, because right now it is the second fastest printer in our shop. I think the, the Chidi Tech printers are 600 millimeters per second, uh, but that is a considerable price difference between the two. So I printed, I printed, and I printed some more. And at this point, I can say that I'm pretty happy with it. This is the Anycubic Cobra 2 Pro. Uh, we spoke about it briefly in uh, previous episodes. We tested out Polymaker's Polysonic PLA on it, where we were pushing the top speed, trying to get that super fast Benchy going. And I also used this printer to make the Halloween headcraft costume. So yeah, I've been trying this for a while and I finally want to give you my take on it. Good and bad. So let's get specs out of the way. The Cobra 2 Pro has a build area of 220 by 220, uh, which is a little bit smaller than the more common Ender Style and Neptune 4 non plus and max printers, which have 235 by 235. It has SG15 bearings on the X and the Y axis, which make things really rigid and lightweight as well. It also has what looks like a dual Z, although it just has one Z motor with a lead screw that has a timing belt attached to another lead screw on the other side. It has a powerful 5020 fan on the printhead, unlike the Neptune 4 series, which uses fans statically placed on the gantry here. It has belt tensioners and it does have a direct drive extruder with a reverse Bowden attached to a filament sensor right here. What is interesting about the printer is the leveling system. So when you are leveling it for the first time, it does have this little nozzle wipe feature here. I think it's made of silicone or something. So when it is leveling, it will wipe the nozzle so that there's no gap between the nozzle and the bed that is filled in with filament. It also has this little sensor at the back of the bed that detects the Z offset automatically. So technically you shouldn't need to set the Z offset manually when you are leveling it for the first time. Now, this is all actually pretty similar to the Cobra 2, which came out a few months ago. We did a little review on that too. So what's the big deal? The Cobra 2 had zero resonance compensation. It was based on a flavor of Marlin. And even without input shaping, it could print up to 250 millimeters per second, which is fantastic. Hardware wise, these are incredibly stable printers. I cannot state that enough. Anycubic did a really, really good job of putting this printer together uh, especially right now when so many manufacturers are more concerned with software enhancements than hardware enhancements. They just went back to the beginning and started from scratch and they did a fantastic job with both printers. And I'm not Anycubic's biggest fan when it comes to their FDM range. I'm much more fond of their MSLA range actually. Uh, back in the day they had the Mega printers and the Mega Zero and the um, variants of the Mega which were even bigger or budgetified versions of it. Uh, then they had the Cobra range and the Viper range, uh, which were good printers, I guess, but they're, they weren't really startling. So I am kind of surprised because this has now become my workhorse printer. But let's get back to hardware. So this is very, very similar to the Cobra 2. Uh, one major difference is the touchscreen. Touchscreen on the Cobra 2 was very, very, very spartan and sparse. This one is really a breath of fresh air. Because like other Clipper and Clipper-like printers, we have an internal memory with a history of your projects. We have a heater control and extrude and retract control, auto level calibration and resonance calibration and controls over the motors in a very easy to navigate menu format. I do like that we have a main toolbar at the bottom and on top little tabs for sub menus. We have a USB interfaces, no more SD cards, thank Christ. We have Wi-Fi, we have got a cloud service, we've got a webcam option. Now these are not revolutionary features, but together they make the process very, very smooth and stable and easy to use and hassle-free. And that is one half of why I like this printer. The other half is speed. So we tested out the speed of this printer using Polymaker's Polysonic PLA. You can check the video right here. And we printed a lot of Benchies. Um, uh, 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 I just got benchied. But that was just a load of benchies. What is it like when we're printing a run-of-the-mill model at high speed? We 
We did some tests with other filament on this printer, of course. We did a couple of Ben Dancy models. If you're not familiar with this creator, there's a link down in the description. Check out this stuff. They are amazing. I really like them because they're great for resin prints, but they're also wonderful for FDM as well. I love the fabric textures on these models, and this is with our Eco PLA Matte Black, which looks wonderful at 0.2 millimeter layers. And this actually took just over an hour to print. That so was not bad. This was pushing about 400 millimeters per second. Yes, you can print really fast with our Eco PLA Matte Filament, even at 400 millimeters per second and with seamless quality at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. But we also did something bigger at 0.1 millimeter layer heights, Ben Dancy again, of course. And we have a fantastic surface finish on this as well. The only issue I had with this was the support interfaces. I think I need to adjust the Z distance for this, but it was really nice. But that is PLA. What about something else? What about uh, PETG? What about PETG at high speed, perhaps with a print in place model? And as we all know, according to the Oratrice Mechanique d'Analyse Cardinal, oh, and as we all know, PETG can be kind of troublesome with print and place models because it undergoes something called die swell. So precision can be a bit of an issue for print and place models, but we tried it anyway with our own PETG and it works lovely. Look at that. Ooh. Okay, what about ABS? So we tried some of our ABS and it came out uh, pretty nicely. Uh, although I must say that this is our own ABS and that is sort of an anti-warp ABS. So if you try this with a different ABS, you might not have the same results because uh, it's not an enclosed printer, obviously, and a lot of ABS will warp without uh, an enclosure. But we tried it on ours and it came out really nicely, except for this little bit at the top. And this can be a bit of an issue for high-speed printers in general, uh, because the, the layer time here is incredibly short, like a few seconds only. So I have this set that the fan would go on to 50% uh, if, if the layer time was under six seconds, I think it was. Uh, that wasn't enough. I need to try to do this again at 100% fan speed when we have short layers. So I think that was my issue with the slicer, but you will have problems with high-speed filament unless you have proper cooling, even with ABS. Okay, it prints well, but what about the hot end and the extruder? This is a high speed printer, so I want high flow. And right now we're only printing 0 0.1, 0 0.2 millimeter layer heights, which is fine for most models. But what if we want to push this to the absolute max? How fast can I push this? And what layer height can I push this at? Because for me, I do a lot of prototyping, so I need draft prints and draft speed prints. And that means printing at 0 0.3 millimeter layer heights, at least. Because I want these to be done quickly. They don't need to look pretty. They just need to serve their purpose temporarily before I move on to a much more finished piece. So how much filament could I actually push through the hot end? So Stefan from CNC Kitchen has this flow test, which is also available online to help you figure out the max flow for your hot end. It just extrudes certain amounts of filament and then you can weigh them to see how much filament was actually extruded. And eventually that flow will go down when it reaches the limit for your hot end. So we did a little flow rate test between 20 millimeters cube per second and 32 millimeters cube per second. At 26 millimeters cube per second, the flow rate goes down to 90%. At 28 millimeters cube per second, it goes down to 85%. 30 was 81% and 32 was 73%. I think 10% is kind of the limit where you're going to step into really bad extrusion. So I'm going to take that. I'd say 26 millimeters cube per second is the limit for this hot end. Compare that to uh, the Bamboo Lab hot end, which is 32, although that's 32 with a high flow filament. Um, the filament that we're using right now is just a regular Eco PLA. And so I'd say with a high flow filament, you could get higher. In fact, with the polysonic PLA, we did reach about 30, maybe 32 before it started skipping around that. So for what you're getting, that is not bad. That is comparable to a Bamboo Lab hot end. You can use any cubic slicer with this printer. And actually all the prints I did here were with that slicer. So just so you know what you're getting with it. However, there is nothing super special about it. Although it does have a pressure advanced tool that enables whatever K value you want with this filament, which is nice. Otherwise, those of you familiar with another slicer will probably notice the similarities. Hmm. 
and Cubic do also have a profile for Prusa Slicer on their website, which you can download. Uh, and that is what I'm using for pretty much all of my prints because that is just my go-to slicer. Now, while I said that this is a great printer and I, I stand by that, there are some things that I don't like. So firstly, max temperature on this hot end is 260 degrees. So that means we have a PTFE hot end. So really, I wouldn't recommend printing over 240 degrees because that's kind of the temperature at which PTFE starts to degrade at. So you can print PLA, most PTGs, most ABS, TPU, but that's sort of the limit of what you can do. You can't really do any technical filament on this. Some nylons perhaps you could print, uh, but not a huge range. Secondly, like the Cobra 2, this printer uses a non-standard nozzle. So it looks very, 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 very similar to the Volcano nozzle, except it has this little thing at the top, which gives a little gap between the heat break and the nozzle when it's pushed into the heater block. And I find this really, really disappointing um, because they could have just used a Volcano nozzle. And while you can get replacement nozzles from us, I just think it was a bad decision to begin with. So should you get it? Well, if you want to print standard materials, PLA, PTG, TPU, ABS at high speed, high accelerations and good quality on a budget, then yes, this is an excellent printer for you. And I would highly recommend this for a beginner. But if you're into printing something like a little more technical, then the Neptune 4 range might be better for you because it has a 300C hot end. If you do like this printer, but you're a little bit put off by the, let's say, average build area, then you could also get the Plus or Max models. They're also in our shop, so you can maximize your prints. If you have any questions about the Cobra 2 or Cobra 2 range, then let us know in the comments below. And if you're watching this video soon after it came out, Black Friday approaches. Ooh. Thanks again for watching, guys. And if you like what you saw, considering leaving us a like or clicking on that subscribe button. And we'll talk to you next time. Later. I got it.